Hi guys, good morning. I, I hope you're doing very well. In this unit, we're going to learn some of the most important concepts in, in machine learning. Okay, the title of this unit is Model Assessment and Model Selection. And what, 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 what is Model Assessment and, and Model Selection? Well, so in machine learning, what we do, as you know, is to build models to predict some output variable in an instance, in a situation that we have never seen before. That's the whole point of, of machine learning. And usually um, we have a, a different, a range of different models that we can use to make these predictions. And in principle, we can choose any of them. So what we're going to learn in this unit is how to select the best, okay? And in order to select the best, the best model among all the ones that we can choose from, we have to, to have a way of assessing them, of knowing how good they are. And the way we're gonna test these models, the, the way we're going to assess them, is by estimating how well they do it on new data. Why on new data? Well, because that, that's why we built the model in the first place, right? So this unit is about how to do this assessment, and then once we know how good each of these models uh, behaves for predicting new data, then we're going to choose the, the best, the one that has the, the, the smallest prediction error on new data. Well, this unit is heavily based, as, as, as before, on the excellent course by Andrew and G. This course here, uh, you can access it uh, for free in Coursera, and also on an absolutely brilliant book written by Hasty, Dipshirani and Friedman that you can also access online for free. And if you like, you can also do an online course also for free that uh, Trevor Hasty and Robert Dipshirani did uh, a few years back and it's, it's absolutely awesome. That, that course is, is amazing. Okay, so let, let's start with, with the outline of this unit. In this video, we're just going to learn about what underfitting and overfitting is. These are really important concepts, okay? This, this is probably the most important video of the whole course. Okay, so imagine we have a set of training data, okay? Th this set is these five points, and, and we keep on uh, studying this running example of trying to predict the price of a house as a function of its size. And we've got just five houses. We've got their size and, and, the, and their price. And that's all we have. Okay. And what we can do is to fit three different models. And so far, we don't know which one is going to be better. And that's what we're going to try to find out here. And we're going to fit a linear model here. We're going to fit a quadratic model, a polynomial of order 2, and we're also going to fit a polynomial of order 4 here. Okay, so take a moment to think first about what kind of model we're going to get for each of these three scenarios. Okay, here, if we fit a line on this data, we, we would get probably something like this. And and here, if we fit a degree of, of uh, sorry, a polynomial of degree two, what we're gonna see is a parabola. And well, this doesn't look quite right as a parabola, but it's meant to be a parabola. And and finally, think, think, take a, a moment to think about what is going to happen here. And what is going to happen is that in this function, in this model, we've got as many parameters as data points we want to fit. Okay. So then we're going to be able to, to fit a polynomial that goes through each and every point in our data set. Okay, that's always possible because we've got five degrees of freedom, that is from theta zero to theta four, and we've got five data points. So, so we're going to nail it, basically, uh, for the training set. And now the, the key question here is, okay, if, if you had to choose one model, one of these three models to make predictions on new houses, which one would you use? Let, let, let's think about it. Okay, so this model over here, the simple one, the linear one, doesn't look quite right, right? Because 
we're making a systematic error. We're at the beginning for really small houses, we're systematically over predicting, predicting a price higher than the real one. Then for a large range here, we're under predicting, we're predicting a lower price than the actual price. And then at the end for really large houses, we're again over predicting, we're predicting prices higher than they should be. And this is a systematic error. Okay, this is a systematic error. We say that we're underfitting the data. What, what does that mean? Well, it means that the model we're using is not sophisticated enough, is not complex enough to capture the underlying relationship that exists between the input and the output. The relationship in this case has a certain curvature, okay, and there's no way we can capture a a curvature with a linear function. So this, this model is too simple to capture the un underlying relationship between the input and the output. We say also that this, this kind of model, this simple model, has high bias. What, what, what is high bias? Bias is a kind of preconception that we have or that the model has before actually seeing the, the, the real data, the training data. It's like it's here it would be, okay, I've got the, pres the preconception that the relationship between size and price is going to be linear. And I've got that preconception before I look at the data, and no matter how the data look li looks like, I'm not going to change it. It's, it's going to be linear. So that, that, that is the intuition between high bias. And it also has low variance. What, what is low variance? Variance relates to how much my model would change if I fit another training set. Another training set, equally good, that comes from the same underlying process, but it's a different realization, okay? And if you think about it, if we had five, uh, five houses that are not like this, but they're in the same city, same process, probably if we fit another line, the second line would look pretty much like the first one, or it, it would differ very, very little, excuse me. So that, that means to have low variance, because the model changes very little if I use it to fit another training set. These models tend to be highly interpretable, okay, the, here the relationship between X and Y is pretty obvious, and as we've said, they're, they're not flexible, they, they, they're not able to capture uh, complex patterns, complex relationships between the input and the output. At the other extreme, we've got this model here, which we say that overfits the data. What, what, what does that mean? Well, it means that here the model is so flexible that it's able to fit the training data perfectly well in this case. I mean, this is an, an extreme case, it doesn't have to, have to be perfect, but the point is that is fitting the training data so well that it's capturing the noise that there is in the data, the random component that that is in the data and that goes beyond a, an underlying relationship that would exist between the input and the output. So this, this kind of model, when we're overfitting, uh, they do great in the training, in, in the training set, but they're not good. They're not good to predict new houses because they're capturing too much noise of the training data. So if you think about it, if we if we looked at a house of basically this size, more or less, we would expect the price to be around here. And our model would give us a, a pretty bad prediction, a pretty bad prediction on new data. So when we overfit, we fit the training data really well, but we don't make good predictions on new data. And that's what we want the model for, right? To make predictions on the new data. So, so they're really, the, 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 these are not good models either. They say also that they have low bias because in this case, there's no preconception. The, the model is really flexible. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm really flexible. I, I don't need to, to make any preconception. I'm gonna look at the data and I'm gonna adapt perfectly well because I'm, I'm perfectly, sophisticated and, and flexible. They, on the other hand, they have very high variance, which as we said, means that if we now fit um, 
this model to another set of training data, we're going to get probably a completely different curve, a completely different polynomial. So every time we use the model to fit another training set, the model is going to change a lot. It's going to be it's going to be all over the place. OK, these models, since they're so complex, they tend to be they, they, they're not usually very interpretable. And as we said, they're highly flexible. OK, and where's the sweet spot? So the, the sweet spot is somewhere in between. What we have to to understand here, what what I would love us to learn, is that models that are too simple are not good because they're not able to capture the whole pattern between the input and the output. But I mean, one could be tempted to think, okay, so a model, the more complex, the better, the more sophisticated, the better. But the key is that that is not right. That is not right. A model that is too complex will fit the training data really well, but that is not what we want. What we want is to predict on new data. And a model that is too complex is likely to overfit, and then it will not make good predictions on new data, which is what we want. So the sweet spot is, is somewhere in between. Okay, uh, so to sum up a little bit, underfitting occurs when the model has too few parameters. The model is too simple, and in that case, it will not fit the training data very well, and it will not generalize well. well what is to generalize? Generalize in this context is to predict well on new data. So here the model will not predict well on new data either. Imagine a, a house that would be like this, okay? And the other extreme is overfitting. In overfitting, we do, we do, excuse me, we do predict um, on the training data very well. The model fits really well, in this case, perfectly well. It doesn't have to be perfect, but in this case, uh, I've drawn it to, to be perfect. But when it comes to predicting on new data, we're not, we're, we're not going to do very well because the model is capturing too much noise of the training data. It's memorizing, in a way, the, the random component of, of the training data. And that random component is random, so it will vary when we look at a new data set. And therefore, these models will not make good predictions on new data. They will not generalize well. Okay, this is a general problem in in supervised learning, in, in, in machine learning. If you think about, we, we've seen a regression problem, now we're going to look at a classification problem. We've got this training, um, this training set, it's the same for the, th for the three cases, and we're going to fit three different models, three different logistic regression models. If you remember, I mean, I'm, I'm going to assume that g is the sigmoid function. So if we equal this to zero, that would be the decision boundary. And this model over here has a linear de uh, decision boundary. OK, so so we'd expect to see a fit more or less like this. This is slightly more complex, so we could see a decision boundary more or less like this. And if we add many, many parameters, many terms here, we would be able to adapt to any any shape whatsoever. And in this case, we could probably lower the training error down to zero. OK, so it would be like this. So it's basically the same here. We're underfitting here. We're overfitting. None of these extreme situations is right. This would be the, the model that seems more adequate here. OK. So now, if take a moment to read these questions, and and we're gonna comment them on on the next video. Okay, thanks a lot, and I'll I'll see you in in a little while.